In this video, I'll show you how to use Excel to find our critical Z values and critical T values, as well as the margin of error in our confidence interval estimates. So I'm actually going to scroll down and let's just talk about our critical Z values and T values first. So what I have here is the formula for finding a critical Z value, which is when we know the population standard deviation. Now, in our lecture, I provided a reference table for the most commonly used confidence levels and their respective Z values. I've also put here from the textbook the confidence levels and the Z values that go with it. So you can use this as reference as well. And so you can see here's the 99%, 98%, 95%, 90%, 80%, and it actually goes down further to 70, 50, 30, and 10. Although these confidence levels are rarely, if ever, used because they are so low. Generally, we want 80% or better, and in business, a commonly used confidence level is the 95%. So really, for z-values, as long as you know the population standard deviation, you can look at a table like this and get it referenced. But in case you wanted to see how it works in Excel, we'll type in equals absolute, so that's ABS, parentheses, norm.s.inv, parentheses. So our alpha, uh, in the question over here, it says, what's the critical Z value for a 95% confidence? So I put a note here that our alpha is just 1 minus the confidence level. So 1 minus 0.95 would be 0 0.05. So our alpha is uh, 5% or 0 0.05. And then divide that by 2, because we have two tails on either side of our distribution curve. So I'll go ahead and close parentheses. And when I hit enter, I get 1.96 for my 95% confidence level. And we can see that in the table right here. At 95% or 0.95, it's 1.96. You'll note in the commonly used table I provided before, it only goes out a few decimal places and then this table goes out to four. Um, if you want to practice one more, we can see what 99% looks like. So we'll type in equals absolute parentheses norm.s.inv parentheses uh, in this case, we want a 99% confidence level, so our alpha is 0 0.01. Divide that by 2, close our parentheses, and hit enter. And so you can see our critical Z value at 99% is 2.5758. You can see that right here in our table as well. But what happens if we don't know the population standard deviation, which in real-world application is usually the case? So what we'll do is use this formula right here t.inv.2t. So one way to remember is that we're looking for t values and we've got t's in our formula. Um, note that it, in the formula it states probability, but probability is the same thing as saying alpha. I'm not sure why Excel picks a different word for the same thing, um, but sometimes you'll see in the lecture I refer to it as alpha. So let's type in equals tinv2 2t parentheses. Now over here we're interested in the critical t value for a 95% confidence level. Uh, again, so our probability or our alpha is 1 minus the confidence level, so we're going to do 0 0.05 comma, and then our degrees of freedom is just our sample size minus 1. So I think in the example earlier we had a sample size of 12, so then our degrees of freedom would be 12 minus 1, which is 11 and close out and hit enter. And we can do the same thing for 99% confidence level. Say our uh, business decision makers want a higher confidence level and so we want to see what that t value looks like and so we'll do equals t.inv.2t parentheses at a 99% confidence level our probability or our alpha is 0 0.01 comma and again assuming our sample size is let's say 12 the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so 12 minus 1 gave us 11. Close my parentheses and hit enter. And so the critical t value for this scenario would be a 3.1058. So for our critical t values, uh, the formula itself is not too hard to use. You just want to make sure you know what your alpha or your probability is and your degrees of freedom, which is just your sample size minus 1. Scrolling up, now let's go ahead and talk about the margin of error. So we're working on a confidence interval estimate. Our confidence interval estimate is the point estimate in front, so that would be our sample mean, plus or minus the margin of error. So this right here is the margin of error when we know the population standard deviation, 
And this one right here is the margin of error when we don't know the population standard deviation. So let's do uh, problem three from the homework and from the lecture. It says to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean given a sample mean of 300, a population standard deviation of 55, and a sample size of 250. So I'll type in equals confidence dot norm. And so our alpha is going to be 1 minus the confidence interval estimate of 95%. So it'd be 0 0.05, comma. We want the standard deviation given to us at 55 and our sample size of 250. We will close out and hit enter. And so our margin of error is 6.82. To get the confidence interval estimate, that means the lower and the upper limits, we then take over here, go equals, we'll, we'll take our sample mean of 300, and we'll call it, this is a plus or minus, so we'll subtract our margin of error that we got to get the lower limit, and then again our sample mean of 300 plus our margin of error of 6.82, and so our confidence interval estimates on the lower end and upper end are between 293.18 and 306.82. It's important to understand the vocabulary. When we talk about a confidence interval estimate, there should be a lower and upper limit. When we talk about the margin of error, it's half of the formula uh, in terms of the plus or minus our critical value times our standard error. And so this formula gets that piece for us. Then you have to put it together uh, into the rest of the formula to get that confidence interval estimate. Let's go ahead and do a margin of error or a confidence interval estimate when we don't know the population standard deviation. So here is the same problem from our lecture and our homework. So we'll do equals confidence dot t. t reminds us that we don't know the population standard deviation, so we're going to be using t critical values. So we'll do parentheses. Uh, the alpha in this scenario, since our confidence level is 95%, the alpha is going to be 0 0.05, comma. The standard deviation uh, is our sample standard deviation. We'll type in 6.89, comma. And then our sample size was 12. Close out and hit enter. We get 4.38 for our margin of error. So for this piece of the formula. So to get our confidence interval estimate, which is the lower and upper limits, we will take equals. Here's our sample mean, that's our x-bar, of 102 minus the margin of error of 4.38. Hit enter. And then do the same again to get the upper limit, our sample mean of 102, plus our margin of error of 4.38. Hit enter. And now we have our confidence interval estimate with the lower and upper limits. If you have any questions, just let me know.